God bless everybody. Today is November 4th of 2023. Uh, this is a Middle East update, uh, concentrating mainly on Turkey and how Turkey is getting ready to enter the Israel conflict in the Middle East. So Anthony Blinken, um, Secretary of State Blinken, goes to Turkey because they know the situation is dire and Turkey is getting ready to walk into this war. And after you see these articles, you'll understand that this is going to probably break out pretty fast. I don't know if that November 5th date I keep throwing down will matter here, but it's a real possibility that something could break out in the next 24 to 48 hours or within the next week. So, whatever. Um, this is getting getting pretty hardcore out here we need to watch these things so I'm going to bring you up to date on what's going on with Turkey in general and why they might break out in um, Syria soon and do an invasion as I've been talking about for some time so Lincoln goes over to Turkey has these discussions with it after Israel and Jordan um, tries to get some type of humanitarian aid um, a pause, humanitarian pause. Um, everybody wants to cease fire. They want Israel to just quit attacking the Palestinians as uh, we're having worldwide protests against Israel and how they're genociding Hamas, even though Hamas is the one, or the Palestinians, even though they're the ones that brought this government into place. Hamas is the one that originally did the attack. And so I don't know why everybody's siding with Hamas it must be the time of the season when everybody goes to the other side of this equation and we find out who are good people and who are bad people and this is a war about good and evil and so we need to understand which side are you on are you on the right side of this equation um, I'm pretty sure I'm not on the equational side of people going in, massacring people, killing and chopping their babies up, raping their women and kidnapping them and placing them in holes in the ground so that they can't can use them as protective shields against the armies that need to go in and rescue them. Um, that's a pretty twisted view if you are following that group of people. And yes, you are in war. I'm sorry, war has casualties. That's why we don't have a war. Because when we start wars, innocent people get destroyed. It's just that simple. But Hamas, or the Palestinian government, is controlling the narrative over there and the media. And so you're going to see these numbers driven up tremendously over what they probably are. And so we just need to keep all that in context. So, um... Anthony Blinken goes over, underscores the importance of protecting civilian lives in Israel and Gaza because they have to look like they're trying to work both sides of this equation, and that's hard to do. Look, you're in a war, and it's hard to be a humanitarian to the other side when you're fighting them, okay? And I know it's the civilian populations, but the, regardless, the civilian populations are the one that put this government in place. This government decided to do this original attack, and now they're taking on the consequences of that action. And so, I'm sorry, it's the way it is in war. You're going to have civilians die, children, old people, things like that. So you've got this guy going over, this is extremely fast that they would get a meeting this quickly. And if you look at the systemic rhetoric that Erdogan's throwing down in these next few articles, you understand why he's over there. So the, the first thing we must understand is that this is moving pretty rapidly on the ground. Even though they've not done a, a full invasion, they are literally have tanks and all kinds of stuff on the ground. They're literally systematically going through these areas and cleaning them. They're also trying to systematically go through and find these hostages and, and rescue them. And hopefully you don't have a lot of casualties in this process. So I talked about the other day about them surrounding Gaza City. And um, Israeli has uh, 
basically rejected all calls for ceasefire or or even humanitarian pause because they feel that that will give Hamas the ability to rebuild their forces and regroup and do things, uh, maybe rehide hostages into other locations, things like that. So they don't want to. Uh, basically, they want to keep the pressure up on um, Hamas. Hamas armed wing warns that invading Israel soldiers will go home in black bags. Well, I'm thinking there will be a lot of people on both sides going home in black uh, body bags before this one is over. Um, so I'm just going to go through some of these articles. Going to want you to get a feel for what's going on out here. So Turkey is not happy here. I keep talking about it. this is the nemesis to Israel. It's been the Ottoman Empire's been the nemesis to Israel forever, okay? You just need to understand they're the seventh kingdom in the statue, the toe and um, feet of clay and iron that won't mingle together the muslims they'll not mingle together until you decide you want to destroy israel or whatever and then they'll come together but in this case this man wants to conquer israel and take over the temple mount just as autumnism tells us they want to do they want to conquer the world and he is the new conqueror of the world he is the new leader of the muslim community and so he's going to be the one that leads this act okay turkey crosses and this is this is extremely harsh rhetoric going on here turkey crosses out netanyahu will bring israelis war crimes to the international crimes commission and He's getting ready to invade, I'm telling you. You've got to watch this guy. As we move forward, you're going to see a lot going on here. Um, Erdogan indicates that Netanyahu is, is someone that they can no longer talk to and that they've crossed him out. And so there is no, there's no ties between Israel and Turkey at this point. It's all in shambles. And this man is going to get ready to do what he's been talking about for some time now. And that's genocide those Kurds. But when he does that invasion, he has no choice. He's got to go into Syria, okay, through the land invasion, which is going to affect the, the uh, Syrian defense forces, the Kurds, and the Arab nations over there. And this is going to get ugly soon as he drives his armor down through there as he has the second largest army in NATO. And this is going to be extremely brutal. And you think the refugee problem is pro a problem over in Gaza? Wait till this thing kicks out. You know, we keep shipping guys over there. We keep shipping armor over there. We keep shipping more ships over there. We had everything over there and then we took it all out. And now we're putting it all back in. Um, you tell me. What a waste of resources. Anyway, Iraqi resistance. Syrian Arab tribes strike U.S. positions in northeastern Syria. Okay? you got to realize this is going to break all out all across Iraq and Syria in the northern portions, especially as Turkey's bombing the Kurds. This is going to affect all these different areas and groups of people. Okay? So, um, says armed factions in Iraq and Syria have significantly stepped up their attacks on U.S. Army and its proxies militias in solidarity with the Palestinian people. Wow, in solidarity with the Palestinian people. So all these groups, and we've talked about all these groups that are coming out against um, Israel and the U.S. at this very moment. And so we're watching these stepped-up attacks. Um, airstrikes launched on Iraq once again hit U.S. occupation bases in northeast Syria overnight on November 4th, coinciding with a ground assault by Syrian Arab tribes in this region here. Okay, and so you need to understand that there's multiple... Everybody's watching Israel, okay? Everybody's optics on Israel. They're not watching the bigger picture. The bigger picture is there's other players getting ready to come into this. And the one you need to be really watching is Turkey. And because the rhetoric is so harsh, now we have um, one senator, probably more, um, but Senator Lee is floating, kicking Turkey out of NATO 
over Erdogan's Hamas' stance because he, look, he does. He's not. He's not a democracy anyway. They call it a republic of Turkey, but that is just ridiculous. It's a. It is a dictatorship under this man that's ruled this country for over twenty years. Okay, and he's like Putin. When he doesn't like stuff, he like jails and kills them. Okay, you need to understand what these people are and and that they're radical. They're radicalized. And we don't get along with them. So we got a senator out here saying, hey, get out of here, Turkey. Why are you even in here? Um, you know what? EU's been trying to hold you up for 40 years. Maybe that's why. Because you're not a good player in the room. Okay, so I always take you to Syrian live maps because I think they keep updating things fairly fairly soon it's it's hard to get information like on the fly as this thing's happening so i try to bring you the most pertinent and up-to-date information that i can um it says the iranian foreign minister in turkey if the israeli attacks on gaza continue consequences will be severe well okay now understand iran and russia have sort of joined forces here and assad but Turkey's not on this side, okay? They're on the other side of the equation. So this is not going to, it's going to be a clash. We t I just did that video about how Turkey will clash against Iran in the future. And this is going to be in a Daniel 8 prophecy that occurs. We've been talking about Daniel 8 and how the Kurds have to align. Or Turkey will force the Kurds to align with the Persians or Iran. And then when that um pooling of those two groups come together between Baghdad and Shush Iran you'll see those two join and then you'll see Turkey come over and crush them um, this is starting to form and so you need to watch that um, Turkey is bombing certain areas out here you can go and you can look at all these areas that they're bombing different things if you click on it it'll show you on the map where that is um, so this is an ongoing thing that they haven't stopped this is actually the uh, turkey map in the syrian live maps just by the way um turkish president the priority day today is to impose a comprehensive ceasefire in gaza in the gaza strip which is not occurring they're not going to stop and so turkey's going to have to reassess their situation as we move forward potentially do something in the next 24 to 48 hours as this breaking down and he's watching Gaza City being surrounded um, by the Israeli forces as we've also mobilized our forces over there and probably have people on the ground we at least have warships and uh, aircraft that are bombing things right now and so we are physically in this war um, Turkish President Erdogan, we will support regional peace formulas and not those that gradually erase Palestinians from history. So he's going to protect the Palestinians, um, the Gazans. Um, in this article here, as he indicated in this article, this is all about the same time, he indicates that Netanyahu isn't someone he can continue to contact we wiped him out he said look these are strong words you know you're talking about really basically eliminating him at this point depending on how you want to read this rhetoric um so i don't think this is going to turn out really well turkish foreign minister summons our ambassadors to tel v back to ankara because the israel side did not respond to ceasefire demands so this is all falling apart turkey's going to have to make their next move now you know they're siding with hamas and the palestinians so you know where they're going to go they're going to go to gaza um israel foreign minister turkey recalls all of its ambassadors represents uh, another step by Ankara to stand along Hamas. So it's a, it's you you see these lines being formed. You know it's coming. I don't know if it's going to happen on November fifth, but we did have that Battle of Issus on that very date. And because I'm a past to future prophecy type teacher, I believe you will see reoccurring events from the past to the future that may almost land on very specific dates and time of the past because he already explained what's going to happen in the story 
you should know from the history books what is coming upon you and you can follow the history books to determine what's coming up and what's really funny is we never learn from our history that's why he uses it against us because we should know our history and we should know these things are going to happen to us and yet we still mess up and we end up in this place but i think it's interesting that the battle of issus which is this battle around the this portion of turkey coming down into syria and the Kurds and these um, Assad forces and stuff are going to attack or Turkey's going to invade or something here in the next few days. We're going to see something happen that this would happen on no, around November 5th. May not happen on this very day, but it's close. Um, and I think that's interesting. 333, three, three. that's a seems like a biblical number right there. But I'm just throwing that down. And this was when the um, Alexander the Great came down into Syria from Turkey. He had just um, basically conquered Lydia, come down into Turkey, and then he came into Syria before he goes down into Lebanon, goes around Israel, down into Gaza, down into Egypt, comes back up to Tyre, Lebanon, goes to Erbil, destroys the Kurds. They drop down to Baghdad towards Shush, and then we see them destroyed along with iran which is your daniel 8 prophecy once daniel 8 prophecy occurs then you go to ezekiel 38 39 prophecy okay so it's extremely important that we're watching this november 5th date at this moment in time i'm, I'm going to use this article even though i know this is a branch of hamas anytime you see palestinian news agency or hamas um, that's hamas okay because Hamas runs the government over there. So when you look at the Palestinian news feed, it's going to be heavy propaganda towards the other side. Okay, but I, I'm using all kinds of resources out here. I'm just giving you the information. I'm giving you what's going on on all different sides. You can determine what you think is going to happen out here. It's not my job to do that for you. But it does indicate in this article, as it shows here, and it's going to give all these beautiful pictures of the Palestinians' plight, and it is bad over there. Don't get me wrong. There's people dying on both sides of this equation. It's terrible. But Hamas brought this on these people, okay? And they knew this was coming. They've been planning this for months, okay? This is not an overnight sensation. But as you can see, this is week four, which is amazing because Israel usually finishes their battles fairly quickly. This one's going on for some time already. It's going to take months of years. If God doesn't step in, it's going to take a long time. Okay. But you've got all these demonstrations in London. Um, you know, and these are all gall gathering around to support the Palestinian people. Now, if you realize that if they're supporting the Palestinian people, they are not not of God, probably. Not our God, because they they want Allah to come back in this case. Not the God we understand, the Christian God, the God of Jesus, okay? This is the God of all um, Muhammad and the Mahdi thing going on here, okay? You got to understand what's going on here. But they're, they're, there's protests all over the world right now. France, Paris, um, they got them down in Berlin, Germany, Italy, Denmark, Sweden's going off, um, mainly against Kurds there, or um, different things going on there, but you got them in Washington, C.C., and across the United States, and all these different colleges and different things like that, and so realize there's a lot of propaganda being pushed towards the Palestinians' people and their plight. And it is great. And I think they've opened up these corridors to help some of these Palestinian people because it's not the innocent people that we need to be concerned about. And there is a lot of good Muslim Palestinian people, okay? You just have to realize that most of them are radicalized and they don't believe in what we do. And they've been radicalized for generations. And so this is going to become a problem for us because it's hard to fight it. And ideology that says that they want to kill you. And Erdogan's getting ready to restart this caliphate as their new Mahdi, okay? 
And I made a comment to a guy the other day. He said, well, this isn't, you know, I'm over here, so it doesn't affect me is basically what he was telling me. I said, well, I'm going to look. You may not believe in religion or you may not believe in what's going on out here in the sense it's a religious fight between evil and good. I said, but they do, okay? They would strap a bomb on, walk into your restaurant, and blow your ass up, okay? It's that simple. Now, I hate to be stark about that, but this is, this is what you're up against. You know, these gay people that or transgender people or whatever you know I don't get into the names thing I don't I, I can't even tell you what people are anymore there's too many names to know what they are and I can't if you defend somebody by trying to figure out what they are okay they would take those people and throw them off the highest building possible and kill them even though they're standing there in the protest basically justifying this kind of behavior this demonic behavior that these people are throwing down this is perverse behavior okay it's not nothing nice about people walking into your look these people let's take your position whatever city you live in a group of armed people come into your city they take your loved ones they kill half the you know a thousand of your population they steal your babies they take a lot of people across the border and then they still have them okay do you think you'd be happy about this i'm pretty sure the israelis are upset <laughs> this is the worst thing that's happened to them since the holocaust so they aren't looking nicely upon this okay and if you're following these demonic people these palestinians or their Hamas leadership, I should say, not necessarily that all the Palestinians are demonic, but their leadership is. They would use these people as shields. This poor little child is smiling. Oh, free Palestinian. They kill you. They'd stick you in front of a building and let a so fall on you. Okay? It's just that simple. You wouldn't be smiling. Oh, that's right. You're a martyr now. Wow. Works, works well for them. And I think this sums up the plight against the Kurds. They're being genocided. I think it's I think it's amazing that Erdogan can come out and talk about the genocide of the Palestinians through Israel and the US, but yet he's in the process of genociding the Kurds and has been doing this for oh, I don't know, twenty years. And then he's up there in Armenia genociding the Armenians through Azerbaijan, but nobody talks about that genocide. Um but yet Erdogan's in NATO still. Why? Maybe that's why um, Senator Lee's decided that maybe it's time for them to leave. So as we get in here, the Kurds are in trouble. And these people are under massive judgment, as it indicates in Daniel 8. It's just that simple. And I don't think prayers will help these people because God says after a point in time, prayers will not help groups of people. They're just under judgment after a point. Our hope is that by displaying the widespread scope of these Turkish war crimes against civilian sites, the international community will demand accountability against the preparatory orders uh, given to them in Ankara. Um, and so you need to understand that this is a constant thing that's going on with the Kurds. No one ever reports this. No one ever talks about the Kurds. Okay. Um, he just finished that original um devastating impact of military offensive which began on october 5th um which was his end of his first phase now he's into the secondary phase which is much more uh, stringent with uh, hard targets and he's really just going to beat the kurds into the ground um so you just need to understand um that the kurds are a major player here if you go into daniel 8 10 uh, through 12 you'll see darius or darius the mead that's important the medes are the kurds and so we need to understand who they are and the erdogan is not happy with sweden still he's saying that's what i mean here's another article this just came out today he's slamming the kurds and sweden on not doing enough to curb these 
Kurdish militants that he's having issues with. And so the Turkish leader comments may signal further delay in Stockholm's bid to join NATO. He's not going to, he doesn't care. I'm telling you right now, he doesn't care. Um, he hasn't been allowed to join the EU for 40 years. Why do you think he would care as they just now are starting to move Ukraine into there and Sweden has become such a problem with the Koran burnings and different things like that um, that he's going to allow um, Sweden to become part of NATO. He will leave first or maybe they'll kick him out first depending on how that goes. So one of the major problems with Turkey is its economy that's had inflation beyond crazy. Now you've got like a what they are lying to you. Suppose you got a four to five percent core inflation. Okay, they got sixty five percent, sixty five percent, and that's down actually. It was eighty or so percent for a while. So um, they thought it was going to be fifty eight. It's moving up. Anytime you get into economic devastation, you go to war. Okay, it's just that simple. Okay. So they keep forecasting it down, but if you break out into a massive war, that's going to hyperinflate fuel in the Middle East. That's going to hyperinflate food and other things, pretty much everything. So if Turkey gets into this, which they will, and there you go, they had a 24-year high of 85.5% in October of 22. Oh, wow, now they're only paying 64 five percent inflation that is 10 to 12 times higher than what you're paying you can't even imagine trying to eat or feed your families and stuff under this inflationary tyranny and erdogan's done some really bad things by doing exactly what he the opposite of what he should have done uh, financially to get his economy back up and running. He's done exactly the opposite thing by lowering rates instead of raising rates to get the inflation down. And now he's in a mess. And so now he's getting ready to go to war. It's just that simple. So anyway, watch Turkey. I don't know if anything's going to happen on the 5th. Um, you know, 24 to 48 hours from now, anything could happen in this game. So... But Turkey's drawn his red line. He's drawn his line in the sand. You know where he stands. He's wanting to rebuild this caliphate, as he's been talking about for 20 years now, and how he's going to rebuild this neo-Ottoman empire by the end of 23. And it looks to me like he's on the path to do that. Now, whether he's going to accomplish all this in the time frame of something going on on november 7th as it indicates in the battle is this you know it's just a date i know in the past that something happened similar to this that could happen in the future i've talked about this past the future thing whether it happens on those or very specific dates or times it could happen close to those times and the calendars are you know maybe off a few days just as the yom kippur war 50 years ago happened and then we saw another reoccurring instance just recently and so we need to watch all these things but regardless this man here erdogan is going to change the middle east in days and weeks at best he's not going to sit this one out and his rhetoric is extremely challenging for both israel and the u.s and NATO and the EU and all the other people that are affiliated with this problem. But this man is, in my opinion, the white horseman that will bring a quarter of the world into war here soon. And he will die on the sixth seal by the wrath of the Lamb, as it indicates in 616 Revelation. Then you start a trumpet phase, which is even worse. So if you go into the paradigm and you look at the chart that I built, this roadmap for the next four years, or, well, today is 1,427 days. We'll see how that turns out. And if you come into this area down in here, you'll notice that I've got these dates that have been indicated for some time that we seem to be working through right now. You had Erdogan 
basically threatened to leave the EU, EU on the 16th of September. We had already to see the breakout of the next few weeks where Daniel was sickened for 21 days. And then we had that breakout on Hamas on October 7th um, that actually invaded Israel. That ends up with a retaliatory strike around the 9th at Israel once they clean up the mess in there. Um, we've seen a four-week siege on Gaza at this point in general. Um, November 7th is coming up, and that's when we potentially see Turkey invade into Syria and get into this battle. And then we start to walk into that December 22nd to 23 date, which is the besieging of Jerusalem of uh, ten full nations. So we would see potentially a, a falling of Iran and the Kurds in here somewhere which would finish your daniel 8 lead you then into a ezekiel 38 39 prophecy where we see ten full nations of radical muslims joined together um headed by turkey and advance towards israel and um that's a real problem um as we move forward so and then like i say after that december 22nd date god gives them an hour of power or 15 days on the biblical calendar, which then would take you to January 6th of 2024. And to me, and I may be wrong, but that is a six seal event. And if you don't know what a six seal event is, you need to go read Revelation uh, 6, uh, verse 12 through uh, 16, I believe. And you will see what that is all about and how the stars are falling on those nations that go against israel and there's a chain of fire event tectonic plates uh, mountains are moving islands are moving all people all animals on the planet feel this event even though it's probably radiating out from israel you will feel it here and it will affect your infrastructure and different things like that and so you need to get your oil ready because you're going to be in the middle of winter when this hits and then shortly after that you see a third of the planet decimated by four four trumpets before an antichrist rises before spring of this next year and a signing of the treaty potentially on april 20th of 24 which is hitler's brother or Hitler's birthday, which would then take you into your 1260 days of tribulation prior to great tribulation, um, right after abomination of desolation. If you're not ready for this, you need to start really getting your mind, your soul, your body, and everything ready. Uh, this one's going to change everything soon. Um, you are into this area over here in this portion of the calendar. Um, you're moving into Antichrist fairly quickly here. Um, but you are within, you know, if you're talking, if you're talking December 22nd of 23, and today is November 4th, you got what six seven weeks to get your oil in your lamp and ready for destruction maybe two months if you go into the january 6th date or the sixth seal potential date that's a lot of work in two months if you're not ready so you need to get ready you need to start putting your oil in your lamp and that's not just putting your faith in yourself and hoping by grace you're going to be raptured because you shouldn't be here yet. I mean, that's what I keep saying. If you think you're going to be pre-raptured, why are you watching Israel being sieged? You shouldn't be here anymore. So that's just bull hockey, okay? And I've been telling you that one for a while. You will be raptured on the Feast of Trumpets. <laughs> Whatever year that might be. On my calendar, it's October 2nd and 3rd of 27, prior to the ending of the strong generation of May 14th of 2028. Okay, the four score year generation. All things will happen before that generation's completed. So we have to look to the fall feast of 27. 
in my opinion. But if you're in this portion of the calendar over here, <laughs> and and you're walking into spring of 24 and the potential rise of Antichrist with a quarter of the world being decimated here, a third of the world being decimated here before he even shows up, it's going to be extremely ugly on the ground. And your hyperinflation is going to kick in when Erdogan moves into this area and takes over the Middle East. Fuels will go through the roof and you will see hyperinflation kick through everything and that's called the third seal the black horseman okay so you need to understand these things as you move forward you are breaking seals right this moment the first four seals are being broken in front of you once you get to the fifth seal you get to the martyrs where a quarter of the world's been under war and they're going hey are you going to finally do something he does on revelation 6 16 through the wrath of the lamb the sun he decimates these armies, okay? Because Erdogan is the white horseman. And he's been genociding the Kurds for some time now. And he's the one that brought the COVID with him. Because the report started coming out right after this date that he invaded. And you can go look that date up, because that's an invasion date into Syria by Turkey. So... As you move through here and you get into this October 9th date, which is amazing that we saw this attack within a day or so. When I say it was October 7th when the mosque went in, but as it indicates, Michael has been fighting them for 21 days and then he goes against Iran. Okay, but then Turkey comes in afterwards because the king of Greece comes in after this okay which would be turkey so it's amazing that this actually hit pretty much right on the day that israel retaliates against this attack on october 7th of 23 from hamas into their country and then it took them a day or so to go you know we need to clean this up before we actually go in there we got our own problems in our own country they were still trying to route guys out No, this paradigm is scary because it gives you a blueprint to the future, okay, which is being hidden to the other side because the other side won't believe this can be, can actually map this stuff out. But you have Biff's playbook in your back pocket. If you don't know what I'm talking about there, go look at um, Back to the Future. I think it was the second one maybe where they go into the future um i think it's the second one that they go into the future and biff runs the whole thing because of that book that was given to him in the first movie okay he knew what was coming so he knew how to build his empire on something that he could already see happening because he had the playbook in his back pocket you have a playbook in your back pocket okay it's called a paradigm that God gave me to give to you. It's just that simple. You may believe in it or you may not believe in it. But it seems to be playing out. And why he gave it to me, I don't know. I guess I'm the only one that could figure it out, write it down. That's what I do for a living. Seem to work well with my talents. We'll see how this all turns out as we move forward. And it doesn't make me any more special than anyone else out here. And that's the one thing you need you to understand. Many people are gaining information from God right this moment. They're seeing dreams and visions and images and all kinds of stuff. Now what they're doing with that information, I don't know. I've got enough things on my own plate to keep track of their stuff. I'm just telling you that uh, this is my information that I've come up with, and this is where I think that we're heading. You are within days, two months of a six seal event potentially occurring, January 6th, based on my maps. And if you don't know what that is, then you need to go figure it out, because this one's going to get extremely stupid quickly. Are we going to see this breakout on November 5th? I don't know. 
I think something's going to happen soon. Turkey's been talking up the rhetoric and the chatter pretty strong, and you're watching all the articles come out that he's not going to stop. God bless. Have a great day. Find the open door. Find Jesus. Get ready for this one, because this one's going to hit hard soon.